I love rookie season. I love it. It is my favorite portion of the year as it relates to fantasy football, diving into the new crop of rookies. I never watch game film as it relates to NFL players, but God damn it, do I love sitting down for four hours at a time and tearing apart a dude like Tank Bigsby. That dude will not end up on a single team of mine. Instead, today, we're going to be looking at two, in particular, the Zacks. Two rookie running backs that are extremely intriguing in this class, all right? Everybody knows the top jewel of the class. Everybody knows that diamond ring, Bijan Robinson out of Texas, right? Clear top dog. But behind him, there are a lot of interesting players. And as I dive more and more into these rookies, I'll talk about them on the go. But today, I wanted to start off on a positive note. I wanted to bring the good energy for this offseason. We're going to talk about specifically Zach Evans of Ole Miss, and Zach Chabonet of UCLA. Both running backs that I see having a significant role at the NFL level. And listen, I know Jameer Gibbs is out here, Devon A-Chain, who we're going to be talking about, maybe next video, maybe two videos, maybe six videos down the line, but he's a special player as well. I know there's a lot of guys out there. I haven't watched full film on every single rookie running back out there yet, but as I progress and go through the film, y'all will be hearing my thoughts clearly and evidently through these videos. So now that we're into uh, February, here's what you should expect. Mr. Noah, the king of rookie running backs, will be on the microphone, will be in the YouTube theaters twice a week, breaking down rookie running backs. I'm sure he'll get into some rookie wide receivers. He's doing a lot of rookie wide receiver write-ups for our rookie dynasty draft guide, so stay tuned for that as well. He always does amazing work. He's one of my favorite analysts within the dynasty rookie community, so he'll be on the microphone multiple times per week. I will be on the microphone multiple times per week, so get ready for four to five videos, films, featured films throughout the offseason covering everything dynasty and rookie so if you're new here make sure you subscribe if you're old here make sure you hit the button that looks like this and drop a comment down below which rookies under the radar right now we need to see we need to watch the film on and we need to break down for y'all let us know what kind of content you want to see throughout the the next few months, right? Leading up to the combine, leading up to the NFL draft. We will get into the full swing of things and we're going to knock the fucking socks off of y'all. So if you're wearing socks, take them off. If you're wearing a shirt, which you shouldn't be, tuck it in. Hit the fucking intro. <laughs> So I want to dive into how exactly I break down my rookies, how I watch film, and how I evaluate a prospect from start to finish. In the rookie draft guide, which I, I promise I'm not like pitching you on that right now, but this is how I make everybody do their prospect write-ups, and this is how we do the profiles. It's a story from top to bottom, all right? So there are five sections for every single prospect that we do a profile on, which is basically every fantasy-relevant prospect. It'll be like 65 or 70 by the time we're done with them. Five sections. The first section is strictly film. I don't watch too much college ball, not at the intensity level of someone who does this for a job. Like, I'm not in Devy leagues and shit like that. So I pretty much go in with a raw, fresh sleet, sh sheet, slate. I combine sheet and slate. We out here right now without really knowing a player. I don't look at their stats. I don't look at their height or weight. I don't look at anything that I think can have some bias towards the way I look at a player. So I will watch, you know, you can go on YouTube, type the player's name, verse, and it will have cut up game films of this player. So I'll watch usually about five full games of a single player, and I will do an entire write-up on just what I saw from the film right? Burst, acceleration, size, power, pass catching ability, vision, all that kind of shit. And then I'll move on to the next section. And that is strictly statistics, numbers, analytics. So I try to either back up what I said, like, oh, this dude is fast as shit. Oh, this dude breaks away at a very high rate. Oh, this dude, you know, uh, has a lot of power and always falls forward. Like that will show itself in the numbers, yards after contact per attempt. Uh, 10 yard, 10 plus yard run rate, 15 plus yard run rate, percentage of plays, percentage of yardage that came on breakaway plays, shit like that. So we go film, we see what we saw on film, and we know the eyes can lie sometimes. The eyes can lie, but numbers do not. So we back that up or we prove ourselves wrong. And then we start to paint the picture. The next section will be athletics and combine, obviously height, weight, speed, size, all that kind of shit is important. Then we talk about uh, player comps where they could fit into the NFL. And then the last section is 
post NFL draft. So after they hit their landing spot, we know the draft capital. We obviously have the picture of where they should be going in rookie drafts, dynasty startup drafts, shit like that. So one of the first players that I watched film of was Zach Evans. And this is why I like to go in with a completely clean slate because the only thing I knew about Zach Evans, other than that he played at Ole Miss, was that he was 195 pounds. I saw that somewhere, whether it's Twitter or like Pro Football Reference, whatever the case may be. And I said to myself, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, this is the most contact seeking magnet 195 pound running back that's ever declared for the NFL draft. Turns out that was a lie. So I'm watching him, and I'm like, this dude is explosive. This dude is powerful. This dude loves to put his head down and fucking go straight into the chest of defenders. And I'm like, okay, he does leave some things to be desired on tape, but I walked away with a much more positive reaction than I expected. So as Noah said, this dude, Zach Evans, um, listed at six foot. 215 pounds at Ole Miss, was listed at 5'11", 212 pounds at TCU. He transferred after his sophomore year. So he is a big back. He is a prototype size for what the NFL running back position is today. He has a lot of raw tools that will translate at the next level and will help him find a role as an early down runner immediately, that size, speed, power combination. But I want to get the negatives out of the way first. I'm going to be getting in my bag for these, all right? So we're going to go to, we're going to go watch some game film. The first thing that I noticed while he has some like great runs and makes some great plays is his vision can be like wildly questionable at points right and I'm not always like one that likes to get into the weird intangibles and be like contact balance vision whatever because you can't really see what they're seeing but there are some plays that come off so evidently to me that I'm like man if you just use your brain in a small capacity we might be we might be chilling here you might be you might be moving up like an entire round in the NFL draft and i'm going to give you two examples of this um this is him versus auburn this year i believe his second touch of the game might even be the yeah second play of the game all right so he's lining up in the backfield here so it's just a shotgun draw pretty much now he gets this this handoff right and he's making his way there's a big gap in the middle right it's a big hole here and he's got a decision He's looking straight ahead, okay? And if you look, it's very clear. Like, to the left, there are these two linebackers submerging into that gap where he's at. And there's also this giant hole to the right right here between the tackle and the right guard. He's right here. I I just have trouble understanding what he sees that would make him want to go down this path rather than down here, okay? And I understand that's kind of a, a hard cut, but there's no fucking chance that you have your head up and don't see that and just choose to go straight head first into these defenders, which is what he chooses to do. Like, he just puts his head down and goes straight into the back of his lineman, where a simple cut, a simple cut here to the right gets you an extra six yards probably. You'll eventually have to take this linebacker on head on, right? But, like, you're still doing that over here, where he just goes straight into the back of his linebacker or the back of his lineman, straight into two linebackers to the left side. And that's fine, I guess. Like, you're trying to impose your will, but... I just feel like there's probably better ways of doing that. Um, and then there's another clear play to me. It was at like, all right, this is the play from shotgun again. So he gets his hand off. Like, this is the craziest play I've ever seen for him. Let me zoom in a little bit. So he gets the hand off, right? This is him right here. And then there's this guy here in the middle. And then there's the two guys behind him. He's here. Okay. There's like a very fucking wide open, clear lane right to the left here that somehow he just doesn't want to make a move to go towards, right? And he's already going that way. Like, he already made the decision to start going that way, but instead chooses to go straight up the middle against those other three guys. Like, just watch this in real time. Like, at no point do you see him, like, start to pivot 45 degrees the other way. Like, right here, you should already be moving the other way. Instead, he tries to take on these three linebackers just head on. This was just something, listen, I'm not like a fucking film guru or nothing, but I feel like that enough should be, that should tell you exactly what I mean. And and those are just things I felt like I saw probably a few too many times when it comes to Zach Evans, just super questionable vision on, uh, you know, like three to four different carries or handoffs per game where very clear wide open lanes either to the right or to the left at like a 45 degree angle, but instead he'd rather just put his head down and run straight into a lineman or a linebacker. So it's like it's like on one hand, he's executing the play that was called for him. So it's hard to knock him too much for it. It's not like a lot of running backs have trouble 
being good at the next level because they go so far outside of what the play was called. And it's like, dude, just put your head down, go north to south. Instead, you're trying to bounce every run outside. With Evans, I feel like a lot of the time we see him do the opposite, where it's like he runs exactly the play that was called while it's very evident that there could have been more to be had. Like, he leaves a lot of yards on the field, in my opinion. Uh, in terms of, like, his ability in the passing game, kind of questionable. He didn't get a ton of receiving looks in, like, the five to six games that I watched of him. The results were kind of like a mixed bag. I feel like when I watch him, I feel like if you're a college starting running back, you're usually athletic enough to just, like, catch minimal, simple dump-offs that come your way. He dropped some easy ones that, that seem more like they were focus passes that were dropped. So my concerns as it relates to Evans are his, like, vision, leaving a lot of yards on the field just because he's so zoned in on putting a red dot on the defender's chest. Um, and then just third downs in general. Like, obviously, a power back like this can do really well in short yardages, but passing game, questionable. Pass blocking, not good either. And for someone that's, you know, supposedly 210, 215 pounds, you should probably be able to do that well. But that's kind of where the negatives end for me as it relates to Evans. I think he has a lot of things that are like really, really admirable for a running back going to the next level. Like he's extremely explosive. They ran a lot of toss plays to him, a lot of outside runs where he'd like hit the corner of the tackle. And then once he hits that, if there's any open field, it's extremely difficult to tackle him because he has a really good combination of like power and size and speed. He's not overly elusive, but once a guy like that gets going, it's extremely hard to bring him down. Like once he changes directions a little bit, it's hard for, you know, a safety that might be 10 pounds fewer or 10, 10 pounds lighter than Evans is to actually make a tackle on him. So we can quickly go through the numbers here. Uh, I mean, he was at TCU for two years. He ended up transferring because he was kind of like in a committee. He ended up getting hurt his sophomore year. And by the time he came back, he was like, I'm underutilized anyways. I'm going to move somewhere else. Goes to Ole Miss. He actually ends up back in a committee behind uh, a freshman, an extremely fucking talented freshman, Quinchon Judkins. You'll be hearing a lot about that name in, in a couple of years. He's a lot of people's RB1 in the 2025 class. But for the most part, the numbers that I looked at echoed pretty much what I saw on film. Uh, the dude is powerful and explosive, 3.5 yards after contact per attempt, which ranks inside the top 25% of the country. Not overly elusive, 17.2% missed tackle force rate which was 74th among 169 qualified running backs. And all these advanced numbers that I use throughout the offseason are either through uh, PFF Premium or Sports Info Solutions. Both gather like in-depth analytics for these college running backs. And then amongst that, like 17.2% missed tackles forced rate. 76% of those were by broken tackles. Only 24% were missed. So like the evasive part was just a quarter of the way he made guys miss. 76% came through uh, your broken tackles. So like power busting through these defenders. No surprise there. Uh, again, like I said, the explosiveness popped on film. And I expect, you know, when he goes to the combine, he'll run a pretty damn good 40-yard dash. He had a 10-plus yard run rate of 23% last year, the fourth highest rate in the entire country. 11.8% of his runs went for 15 plus yards. So you're talking about 23% of the time that this guy got a carry, it went for 10 plus yards. That is a massive plus to have as an offensive weapon in your NFL offense. And again, the, the parts of his game that I think he like suffered in uh, was pass catching and looking at the numbers, he dropped 14.3% of all passes that were thrown his way in college. That's over a 27 game sample size. His A dot, and this is like, this is where I feel like it's telling. You're dropping 14.3% of the targets that are thrown your way and his average depth of throw, right? Like the average distance from the line of scrimmage that his targets came at, 2022, 1.1. Negative 0.6 the previous year, 6.0 in 2020. So you're talking about dropping a ton of passes that are right around the line of scrimmage. Probably tells you not a great natural pass catcher. Uh, his pass blocking ability ranked 123rd out of 167 qualified college running backs per PFF. So as I said, like when I look at Zach Evans, there's a lot that I like about him as a pure runner. I think he could easily end up in a situation where he earns a big role in an offense, like similar to like Isaiah Pacheco, playing strictly on first and second down. Sometimes maybe he'll be the goal line back. Sometimes he'll be involved in like trick plays and shit like that. But he'd probably work best with a dude paired with him like Pacheco. Jarek McKinnon, who takes like the clear and obvious role that he's not great at. And again, we're talking about the Chiefs offense here. Um, so that type of role that he might have in an offense that's not great could could lead to him having uh, not, a, not a significant ceiling. So I think he lacks some traits that do pull him down from having a ceiling at the next level, but I do think he has a lot of good going for him. So I'm interested to see where he ends up landing in the NFL draft. I think he will be one of the top, you know, five, six 
seven running backs that are picked in the NFL draft. And I think he's I think he's overall a really, really good player that brings a lot of good admiral traits to an offense. And switching gears, I feel the same way about Mr. Zach Charbonnet. God damn, that was a bar. I didn't even know that was coming. The more I watched him on on film, the more I liked him. He just doesn't do anything wrong. It's like after watching him play after play after play after play, there's just like fewer mistakes than a fucking New York Times bestseller out here. You just learn to be like, he's simply good at the game. He's an imposing force on the football field, like 6'1", 220 pounds. It's the size that like NFL coaches fetishize about. I think he definitely lacks some high-end traits. Like He doesn't have the high speed or the high-end speed, breakaway speed, like a B. John Robinson or explosiveness of Zach Evans probably. But again, he's just good at everything. You're not going to bring him down with a wimpy tackle. He's big, he's strong, and he uses his size. Also, just like incredible instincts, like incredible vision, very, very rarely makes mistakes in terms of like choosing the holes, moving to the right hole when he sees another one open up. Like not overly elusive and flashy, but... The perfect amount of like vision, agility, that it blends together well, and he knows exactly when. Just very instinctual. And most of all, I was wildly uh, and pleasantly surprised by his pass-catching ability because you see these big guys on tape, and sometimes, again, I went into this very clean slate. I didn't know much about him. I knew he was really, really good last year, but I never looked at the stats because he wasn't coming out. So I'm like, I'm not playing Devi. I'm not really going to look into everything that's going on, and I don't look at the stats before I dive into the film. And again, very pleasantly surprised by his pass-catching ability. In like five or six games that I watched, he did not drop a single pass thrown his way. And I would go as far as saying, I don't think there was a single pass thrown his way that he didn't make look easy, like natural, and add something positive to it. Similar to Evans, like Charbonnet is not overly shifty. Like I said, he's not like overly agile where he's shifting from one side of the field to the other like super quickly. He, he does have times where his arms and shit are flailing more than they need to be and they're like trying to make the defender seem like he's moving and, and it's like not really happening there. And his like start stop speed is probably the biggest concern. But I think in a lot of ways, Charbonnet is kind of like this uh, one of those like some of their parts running backs. He's an above average athlete, like all around. And we've seen a lot of these archetype running backs succeed over uh, recent years in the NFL and in fantasy. Guys like Tyler Algier, James Conner, like Ramondre Stevenson, David Montgomery, Chris Carson, James Robinson. And I think I was listening to Ray GQ, who does great work on, on incoming rookie class and stuff. And he kind of comped him to uh, like a plus version, a better version of Brian Robinson, which I think is good. By most measures, like a great rookie season, all things considered, uh, wasn't considered like a top tier prospect or running back, but made the most with his opportunities. And Charbonnet's better than Brian Robinson. He's not going to run, you know, a four, a four, four, five, forty yard dash. I think most of the draft ca draft capital expectations probably land him in day two somewhere, maybe the end of uh, round two, early round three, possibly. I don't think he drops into round four. I think he has enough uh, name recognition and was a big enough player in college that t some team will get excited about him. And I think most of the draft capital will expect, like if he goes to the combine and runs a 4-6-2, I don't think it plummets his draft stock at all because I think that's what a lot of people are expecting. So we can move over to some of the stats outside of just the film. He was a two-year player at Michigan, transfers over to the University of Central Los Angeles, UCLA, takes over the starting role as a junior immediately, averages 1,500 yards from scrimmage, 30 and a half catches, and 13 and a half touchdowns over two seasons. Just just really, really, really strong senior year. He was actually surprised. He was supposed to come out after his junior year, decided to go back, ends up averaging seven yards per carry as a senior, uh, third in the entire nation. And like I said, man, he is he, he, do, he does that by being powerful, 10th in the country in yards after contact per attempt, uh, more explosive, according to the numbers, and I actually imagined him to be uh, fifth in breakaway runs. In runs of 15 plus yards, he was fifth in the country. And elusiveness, this was a surprise as well. 25.1% broken or missed tackles forced per attempt, which ranked 25th among 167 qualified running backs. That's a mixture of broken tackles, power, elusiveness, all of the above. And my counterpart, Mr. Noah, more parties, I... I believe does have some real hesitancy when it comes to Zach Charbonnet. So I'm interested to hear his takes if he makes some videos on the dude. I know one of his first counterpoints were the fact that Zach Charbonnet, you know, his chart here from Twitter, uh, ran a very, very, very limited route tree. So while he did catch the ball often, a lot of them were like dump offs behind the line of scrimmage or just like easy catches. What I saw was just really smooth athlete on film. And I think he will be able to use be able to be used in other 
uh, areas of the field as a receiver. I thought he looked great catching the ball. PFF graded him out as the 13th best receiving graded running back in the entire country, 112 qualified running backs. Uh, he ran 1.3 yards per route run, ranked 30th among the 112 backs. Again, he's not Christian McCaffrey, but he's not just serviceable. I think he's way above that. So in a year or two, I, I absolutely think this kid can develop into James Conner. And James Conner's had some incredible top 10 fantasy running back multiple years over. Right? I don't even think with a sum of your parts type of running back, you don't need to have every high-end trait. You kind of just need to be good and then also be in a good situation. Have the goal line roll. Catch 45, 50 passes. Be in a top 10 scoring offense. And I think that's absolutely within the realm of outcomes for a dude like Zach Charbonnet. So we like both Zachs. I have Charbonnet over Mr. Zach Evans right now, but as I continue to develop my film skills and I continue to dive deeper into this class, I will keep you updated on these rookies. But again, let me know who I should be watching that's out of the, you know, the obvious top five, top 10 rookie running backs. Let me know what other kind of content you want to see. Do you want to see more film analysis? Do you want to hear more numbers? Do you want to hear more overall dynasty content? Uh, do you want other positions? Do you want mock drafts? Let me know what you need and I'm here to bring it. All right, first rookie content of the offseason. God damn it, it felt good. I'm sorry if my hands were flailing over the little place you know. We out here in New Jersey and New York City, and that's how we do it. All right, I'm going to my, untuck my shirt. Unflex the traps and relax. All right, I love you. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button. We out. Thank <laughs> you.